Greetings boys and girls. In today's video, um, we are just going to actually be going over the materials that I would have gone over with you after school today. All right, let's get into it. The first skill is order of operations. Um, you see I have a little mnemonic across the top. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I use this to help me remember the order of operations. So this is the order that I'm going to solve problems in. So I first will start with any parentheses. After that, I will look for exponents. And then um, multiplication and division, I'm going to do those from left to right. And then the last part is going to be the addition and subtraction. I will do those from left to right. So let's look at a couple of these problems. So the next uh, number one I've already done. So I had 9 times the quantity of 3 plus 7, and then I'd add 1. So the first thing I'd do is the parentheses, 3 plus 7, which equals 10. And I'd take that quantity, and then I would multiply, multiply it by the 9. 10 times 9 is 90, and then I'd add 1 to that. So my answer is 91. For the next one, I'm going to first do the division step, okay? And I have 10... 100 divided by 10, which would be 10, and I'm adding that to 12. So 10 plus 12 would be 22. My answer is 22. In the third one, it's 72 divided by 8 plus 5 times 9. Now, even though division comes after multiplication, you see I put a bracket around multiplication and division because I'm going to do those from left to right. So I'm going to look at 72 divided by 8 which is 9, and I'm going to look at the 5 times 9, which is 45, and I'm simply adding 9 plus 45. So that would be 54. For number 4, if we look at number 4, I have division, addition, and then multiplication. Yet again, I'm going to do the division part first, and then I'll add that to the multiplication answer. So 4 divided by 7 would be 2. I'm going to add that to the quantity of 5 times 2, which is 10, so I would get 12. All right, I want you to try number 5, and then we'll see if we got the same answer. Hopefully, you got 26 is your answer. Because 5 times 4 is 20. You take 20 and add it to the 11. That would be 31. And then you'd go 31 minus 5, which would be 26. Let's do one more, and I'll have you check your answer. All right, this was a fun one to do in your head. 55 divided by 5 would be 11. I need to add 11 plus 11, which would be 22. There's more problems on there for you to practice, but I want to move on to the next skill. Now, this skill is not necessarily easy, but I want us to understand that when we see greatest common denominator, it is just like greatest common factor. Okay, or sorry, greatest common divisor is just like the greatest common factor, which is what I wrote on the side. Okay, and what I'm thinking of with the greatest common divisor is what is the largest number that I can divide both numbers by. Now, if the numbers are even, I know I can divide both of them by 2. Okay, um, if it ends in a 0 or a 5, I know I can divide both of them by 5. Um... For some of the others, it does help to know uh, your multiplication facts. So with 98, the factors of 98 are 2 and 49 and 7 and 14. That's what I was able to just quickly think of. And then the factors of 70 are 7 and 10, 2 and 35, and then 5 and 14. So the largest number that both of them shared as a factor was 14. When I look at 45 and 99, I immediately realize both of those are divisible by 9. 
I know 40, 45 is also divisible by 15, but 99 is not. So I'm going to say that 9 is the greatest common divisor. For 26 and 42, I'm thinking 26 is the product of 2 and 13. And 13 is a prime number, so I'm not thinking anything else. And then 42, I'm thinking that that is the product of 14 and 3, 2 and 21, 7 and 6. But that's it. So the greatest number they share in common is going to be a 2. Now, when I'm looking at 17 and 28, I already know that 17 is a prime number. Therefore, the largest number they'll share is going to be 1. That's the only factor that they're going to have in common. Now, 76 and 92, that one's a little bit harder because 76 is the product of 38. So I know that that is also divisible by 4. If I divided 76 by 4, I would get 19. 19. And no, I don't think that 19 is going to be a factor of 92. Ah, but 4. 4 is going to be a factor of 92. So I think the greatest common divisor here is going to be a 4. Okay, let's see if you can do number 6. You have 36 and 12. Think to yourself, what do you multiply to get to 12? And what do you multiply to get to 36? Well, hopefully we realize that 12 is actually a factor of 36. So the greatest common factor here would be 12. Okay? So we're thinking about the numbers that make up each of those. So as we move on to number 7, you're thinking, how do you get to 44? It's even. It has two fours in it, so that tells you you already know at least two factors. And when I add a number, when I look at a number like 44, I realize it's not a, um, a multiple of 3 because 4 plus 4, the two digits, they equal 8, which is not a multiple of 3. All right, hopefully we realize that 2 would be the greatest common divisor because 44 would be made up of 2 and 22, 4 and 11, and then 54 would be made up of 9 and 6, 3 would be a factor, um, 3 times 18, 2 times 27. So the only thing they would have in common, the largest number they'd have in common is a 2. All right. We're going to move on to the next skill just so that you can see. You have plenty of these to practice, and please show your work as you practice because right now you're just practicing the skills, but I just want to make sure everyone understands them. Okay, the least common multiple. This is asking for the smallest number that is going to be a multiple of these two larger numbers. Now, I did give you some papers on this to help um, you think about some of these skills. Um, but 40, I realized that 40, it's basically a multiple of 4 with a 0 at the end. So I'd have 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, and so forth. So it'd be a whole bunch of multiples of 4 with a 0 at the end. And then when I looked at that 104, I realized if I added a 0 to it, I would have 1,040 
which was probably a multiple of 40, and it actually is. Um, but I was trying to think, hmm, is there something smaller than that? And I thought about what was going to happen as I kept adding 104 to itself. And I realized I get to 520. And I thought about it, if I take the 0 from 520 and the 0 from 40, can 4 go into 52? Well, it can. It goes in 13 times. So the smallest, um, the least common multiple is going to be 520. I can do something similar with 54 and 60. So I'm thinking, okay, 60 is just going to be like multiples of 6 with a 0 at the end. 60, 120, 180, uh, 240, 300. And I'm going to keep adding those. And then I'm thinking about 54. How am I going to get 54 to have a 0? Okay, well, either I'm going to multiply it by 10 or I'm going to multiply it by 5. So let's see, 54 times 5, 50 times 5 is 250. Okay, and then 4 times um, 5 is 20, so that would be 270. Well, I'm thinking 270 was not a multiple. So if I doubled 270, I would get to 540. And let's see, 540 would in fact be a multiple of 60, okay, because it'd be 60 times 90. So 540 would be the least common multiple. Now this scale is a little bit harder, you know, it really requires you to think about what's happening with these numbers, but what I also think it's important to do is think about what, when you multiply two numbers, think about what it's going to end with. That's how I try to think about it. Like, I'm trying to get to zeros. And if I have a 54, a 4 times what equals a 0? Well, a 4 times a 5 equals a 0, and a 4 times a 10 equals a 0. So think about multiplying that way. But don't automatically go to the largest number because you're trying to find the least common multiple. All right, let's look at another scale. Now, when you have a scale like this, they're saying changing decimals, percents, and fractions. When I have a scale like this, they tell me what they want the answer in. Here, they want the answer in a fraction. Here, they want the answer in a decimal. Here, they show me the percent sign. So I need to be mindful to always give them what they're looking for. Now, I gave you some guides at the top of this page just so that you can understand, 10% is the same thing as 1 tenth, which is the same thing as 0 0.1. And I pronounce 0 0.1 as 1 tenth. Okay? So 13% is the same thing as 13 one hundredths. 13 hundredths. The percent means per 100. So 13% is 13 over 100. 0 0.93 is 93 is a, and I can read it as 93 hundredths. That's the same thing as, and I'm going to write it on the side, 93 over 100, which is the same thing as 93%. So notice that when I go from the decimal to the percent, I just move that decimal point two places to the right. Okay? I simply move the decimal point two places to the right to get my percentage. So the 80, uh, 84 hundredths, or 0 0.84, is simply going to be 84%. Now look at what happens here. I have 6 and 64 hundredths, or 6.64. I'm moving that decimal point two places to the right. Now I have 664%. It's There's already over 100 there, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, when I'm talking about a decimal point, I have less than a whole. So I have hundredths or tenths, okay? Just like money, I have pennies, I have dimes. It's not quite a whole dollar. But 
One dollar is the same thing as 100 pennies. Okay? So one whole is 100 hundredths. So that's how 6 and 64 hundredths is the same thing as 664 percent. Now, here they give us the percent and they want us to write it as a decimal. So I'm simply going to just think of that as 0 0.58. That is my decimal. All right. I want you to do the next couple and then we'll check and see how you did. All right. You can check your answers and see how you did. The last skill I really want to talk about here, um, just because of time, is common fractions two percents. These are just, it's about knowing them. It's really what you want to do. So one-seventh is going to be 14%. There are some decimals after it, um, but it's essentially 14%. Now, one-third, you're going to have this 33%, but then there's a 3 that keeps repeating. So a lot of times you'll see people write it as 33 and one-third percent. One-tenth, simply 10%. These are things you just memorize. Again, one-third is 33 and a third percent. One-half. If I have half of it, I have only 50%. One-sixth, that is 16 and two-thirds percent. Because there would be a six that just keeps repeating forever and ever. One-fourth, that's simply going to be 25%. Okay, these are just things you can memorize, and that's really the best advice I have for you. Um, when the nine repeats, uh, or sorry, when you have ninths, then you're going to have like the four repeating forever and ever. So it'll be like 4.4% um, or 4.4 4 repeaty percent. All right. Well, I hope this helped. I'm going to stop here. Uh, sorry we weren't able to meet today, but I hope this helped. Bye.